This video was brought to you by Stoltenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We are now sitting in the Kia EV6, and today I'm going to tell you why Korean engineering beats German engineering. But before I start, big congratulations to Kia for winning the Car of the Year Award 2022 with this car, Kia EV6. And I'm sorry for my voice, uh, feels a bit <laughs> weird, but yes, I'm still recovering from uh, COVID <laughs> round two. But okay, so let's start by telling you how the Porsche Taycan works. Porsche Taycan is based on 800 volt architecture. And then um, as long as you're charging on 800 volt chargers, no problem. But then once you want to charge on 400 volt chargers, what the heck happens then? Some people think that you then split the battery pack in two and then you charge both halves at the same time. That's actually not how it works, unfortunately. Um, what happens is that there is an onboard converter that converts 400 volt up to 800 volt. It sounds crazy, right? Well, that's just how it is. So there's a piece of hardware inside the Porsche that does it. And then back in the days, you would then, uh, you could choose between the, the standard 50 kilowatt or an upgraded 150 kilowatt converter. It was 400 euros extra. Now they have taken away that option. So I think that the Porsche, they then made it standard, the, the 150 kilowatt. So that's good, at least. And then what does it really mean? Well, it means that if you would happen to take your Porsche to 150 kilowatt, 400 volt based charger, and you don't have that option, you will only receive 50 kilowatt from it. But if you have that option, then you can go up to 150 kilowatt. Uh, but um, very commonly though, those Porsches, they will be typically charging on 50 kilowatt chargers for some reason, maybe because Ionti is too expensive for them. What happens then is that what I've seen is that uh, you will usually get around 40 kilowatt only roughly 40 kilowatt. The Powell, last year we went to Arctic Circle together on that race. He was receiving only 39 kilowatt, but he has the 79 kilowatt hour battery pack, which has a lower pack voltage. So uh, after you watch this video, you will understand that there was nothing wrong with this car and there was nothing wrong with the charger. It was just German engineering. So uh, one thing you need to know is that uh, those 50 kilowatt chargers, they have a maximum current output of 125 amp so in order to get 50 kilowatt from those chargers the battery pack needs to be or the voltage in the battery pack needs to be around 400 then you, you do the math and then you get 50 kilowatt but then um, for lower voltages you will not get that and that is actually the problem that is why Taycan was not getting 50 kilowatt but only 49 uh, 39 40 kilowatt and then for the longest time <coughs> I suspected that that um, that onboard uh, converter had a, a fixed rate, a fixed step up of two times. So it would take, uh, I'll come back to that, but yeah, I will show you some of the proof. Uh, I claim it's the proof to back up my claims. But um, uh, then I will tell you then, uh, what about Ionic 5 and EV6? They're, they are basically the same cars, uh, hardware wise. And how does it work over there? Well, uh, they did something brilliant, the, the engineers. Uh, they took the, 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 it's the rear motor, and there was a, there's an inverter close to the rear motor that feeds the motor for driving. And they used that one to convert 400 volts from the charger into 800 volt into the battery pack. Well, I, when I say 800, it's not really 800 volt, it's 700 something, right? Right now it's 766 volt, for example. So they do that. And um, what I've seen in the Korean cars, uh, this one, the Ionic 5 and the uh, EV6, is that when you go to the 50 kilowatt fast charger, even with low state of charge, I would usually get 48, 49 kilowatt, way faster than Taycan, right? Um, and uh, what uh, I started thinking, and for the longest time, I suspected that the uh, this car or the Korean cars, they have um, a variable voltage conversion versus the fixed rate for uh, for the Taycan. Uh, and then, uh, okay, so let me then explain maybe a little bit more uh, behind it. So the battery, for example, Taycan, 
if you take, uh, I, I don't know, I don't remember the voltages, but let's say if the, the battery pack in the Taycan is at 700 volt, what happens when you plug it into the 50 kilowatt uh, charger or the 400 volt charger is that it will ask for 350 volt and then it gets 350, doubles it to 700 and then charges the battery pack. And you see, that's the problem because if you have low state of charge or if you happen to have the, the 79 kilowatt hour version, then you have lower pack voltage and the car will always ask for half of the pack voltage. And then, uh, which means basically means that you will be, usually be charging slower than optional, uh, op optimal. Uh, but for the Korean cars, instead of asking for half of that, it will just do something smarter. It will just ask for a way higher voltage. Uh, I was guessing 400 volt, because if you ask for 400 volt from the 50 kilowatt charger, you will get 50 kilowatt. So this is actually brilliant because it's not only is it better because you can charge faster, uh, you also save weight because you don't need to have another component like Porsche has. You're just reusing existing hardware, which means lower weight, which is better for acceleration. It's better for handling. It makes the car more efficient. It's just win-win. And also you save cost. Like I mentioned that that, that option costs 400 euros extra that you can make the car 400 euros cheaper or maybe even more, I don't know. Um, you also save space, that's also important. And also for Taycan, uh, it was 150 kilowatt cap on it, on how much it can handle. And, and I talk, when I talked to the Kia engineers, I didn't get a, a direct answer. So I w actually wanted to know, can actually the EV6 charge faster? Uh, I think the answer I got from the, the engineers was that uh, it can, the, the car can take 400 volt uh, based charger, uh, well the cap was in the inverter. So I was like, okay, so but I, I, I tried on the V3, but for some reason this car fails to work on the V3. <laughs> That's a different story. I don't know, I tried everything man, I tried all the tricks, hold it, put it in, hold it there have the car on, start charging first before plugging in, plug in first, char start charging afterwards. I tried all the three. Also, some people say you don't have any charging schedule or preheat schedule. I don't have any of that. Still doesn't work on the V3 for some reason. So that's actually a little bit bummer. But okay, so because what I wanted to see is uh, will actually this car be able to charge faster than, uh, than uh, 150 kilowatt but I, I just don't know yet. So anyway, here I'm going to show you the proof. What I've been suspecting for at least, I don't know, almost a year or six months now. Well, okay, maybe not. Well, let's say yeah, for the longest time I suspected that uh, this was the case. And uh, this is uh, from the Chem Power, the Charge Eye, the Chem Power Chargers. Chem Power Chargers as of today is 400 volt based, but they do have, uh, actually, they have 1000 volt based chargers that they use for buses. So they already have the hardware. It's just that for now, they just don't feel like rolling out 800 volt yet, but they can if they want to. But pay attention to the top left, I don't know if you can see it. It says 83.7 kilowatt hour. There's a net capacity. This is the big battery pack, this, the 93 kilowatt hour battery. And you can see that the voltage that the car asks the charger goes slowly up as the state of charge goes up. So if we do the math here, based on the, um, uh, the state of charge versus the voltage, and then I compare this charging session here versus uh, an ionity charging session, when you see the voltage it actually asks for from the 800 volt chargers. And you see there is a strong correlation here, but it's actually at low state of charge for some reason. If you do the math, it's 2.1 times higher. But then at 66%, it's roughly two times higher. And then a little bit lower actually at 76%. But from what I've seen, remember that this is the charging voltage, not the pack voltage. The pack voltage is when you don't have any load, which is discharging, or you don't have any charging going on. That's the pack voltage. But when you're charging it, uh, the charging voltage is higher than the pack voltage. And then of course, when you discharge, you have voltage sag. Uh, so what it means is that 
when you're charging, uh, the, the faster you want to charge, the higher the voltage goes up. And that's why it sometimes you get 2.1 because um, at, the, at Ionity, at, I was charging at over 200 kilowatt, but here I was only getting 106 kilowatt. So this confirms my suspicion that uh, the car, the Taycan, uses a two times a step up. And it's kind of clumsy because, well, actually for, for the chem power, it doesn't matter. You see, uh, it will still charge at decent speed, but it's actually when, when you go to 50 kilowatt charger that it becomes a problem. And also at Supercharger V2, I will come back to that soon. And then on the next uh, graph here, you see an Ionic 5 charging. It could also be uh, EV6, but look at that red line. F it's stable at 448 volt. So this is exactly what I was suspecting all the time. It's freaking brilliant. So, I mean, for you guys who are wondering what the heck is going on here. So what is happening now is that the, the, the car is asking for constant 448 volt. And then the inverter in the back of the car, it's using the rear inverter, not the front. The inverter will then step it up variable, depending on the pack voltage to whatever it needs. So I'm uh, actually not sure why it asked for 448 volt because uh, the chem power charger is capable of delivering 500 volt. But maybe the car has been pre-programmed that most uh, chargers out there, most 400 volt chargers out there, they, they, they can at least deliver 450 volt, but maybe not 500 volt. So that, that could be the explanation why. And recently, my friend Powell, the guy who owns the Porsche, he took his uh, Taycan to a V2 supercharger. It wasn't the V3, unfortunately, uh, maybe next time. But um, he took it there. He properly heated up the battery. He went deep and then he charged it on the supercharger V3, which is 400 volt base. And you see the result. It wasn't charging that fast for some reason. Uh, but if you do the math based on these numbers, uh, the, what I did is that, okay, based on two times step up, uh, did some correction because of uh, different power. Uh, I can guess the voltage that the Taycan was asking. And then you will see that uh, most likely uh, it could seem like the V2 superchargers are limited to around 345 amp something ish. I'm not sure, maybe 350. I, I actually forgot to ask Powell if he had a heater on or something, but roughly 340, 350 amp. Uh, and actually, that actually corresponds uh, well, very well with Tesla's because you see, this is actually, this is quite low. No, or I'm actually, most Tesla's, they don't ask for 300 volt. Most Tesla's, they will ask for around 300. 70 to uh, almost 400 volt, especially the new, uh, well, they call it plaid, but the new Model S, which is also the plaid, but also long range. Many people forget about the long range, but the new battery pack with a, in the Model S and X, they actually have 400 to 450 volt pack, uh, pack voltage, which is better in uh, some ways, actually many ways. So uh, when I also do the calculation based on Tesla's, uh, it actually corresponds because Tesla's are able to hit 140, 100, uh, 145, I wonder is the highest I've seen on the V2. But unfortunately, for uh, at least for this Taycan, uh, the poor man's Taycan, then uh, you only get uh, around 110, 100 to 110 kilowatt, simply because uh, the car asked for too low voltage and uh, like because this, the V2 superchargers they they have a cap on the, uh, on amp. So if the Taycan was better engineered to ask for, or if if the car would use the the like like this car, you know, it will ask for variable uh, voltage. It could just ask the supercharger for 400 to 450 volt, and then you will be capping flat at 150 kilowatt. That's not going to happen. And then, uh, actually, what about this car? Well, I haven't tried it. Uh, maybe I'll try it, but I would assume that the, the, the EV6 will be able to stay flat at 150 kilowatt, given that the battery is hot enough. Okay, so now you guys know it. Korean engineering beats German engineering. Well, okay, okay, there are going to be so many haters out there. I mean, the, the Porsche is probably better at handling and 
lots of other stuff but at least when it comes to converting 400 volt to 800 volt for charging then the koreans are better <laughs> sorry mac well okay so uh this is pretty cool i found out I finally found out about this again i'm not 100 percent sure about what the heck is going on in the porsche but at least now I have very strong indications about this. But of course, I haven't seen the hardware. Maybe we, someone needs to tell Sandy Mundro to, to reverse engineer a Porsche Taycan to see what the heck is going on over there. Actually, maybe he would be interested in this. I mean, if he knew about, heard about this, he'd be like, oh, hallelujah, this is right down the alley of Sandy. He, he wants the production to be simplified. He wants to get the weight down, all that stuff is just win-win. So anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.